let's take another look now what we are doing so why don't we take this out set one curve and take this guy out for a second and what i did here basically use this point to visualize our uh visualize our uh meters or distances okay and the next thing that i want to do is based on this uh kind of an idea so let me sketch it over here so this is our curve right oops so this is let me put it a bit thick here so this is my curve let's say and what i want to do is basically i want to have my i want to have my uh geometries first gets larger as they close to the oops this one is not right but that's fine it's just a um, terrible diagram now but the more they go back from my attractor point the smaller they become that's the idea okay and in this section we, what we'll be doing is this is a plan obviously this is my small sketch over here and in a section what we'll be doing is we put it this way and if you talk about the section draw it nicely so this is my section and let's say this is our pedestrian or the, our road is here somewhere another pedestrian and our plot is going over there and in my plot based on this connection what i'll be doing is i'll be creating my geometries but let me extend this a bit further first oh this is my plot and what i'll be doing is i'll be increasing the sizes so this is a larger one therefore it gets smaller this is a smaller one in scale but it gets taller and this is another smaller one it gets taller and so on and so forth so this is basically what i wanted to do by using these curves and obviously i'll be orienting by using these curves but this is important so I can draw my section line a bit better so we understand that this is a you know a section all right so how we do that we are going to use this distance right and we'll be remap this distance by using our remap and the bounce component and connect this to a target and our target this time is going to be ranging between i don't know like let's say 6.5 to 9 okay and i'll group this immediately not to forget put this guy here put this one here and remapping distances or size let's say okay and if i connect these guys here and this guy here what we are seeing is basically okay there is a problem uh we are having one single distance as my domain and the values are here the map values are ranging between this and that but oh obviously they are not going to be feeding this xyz they are going to feed this guy or in other words i can connect this here and i can connect this here as well so you see what i'm doing the ones that are close to the ones that are close to my curve maybe i can preview this oops not disable it preview this off 
You see the closure ones gets smaller this time. It's something different in our case. So what I need to do now, I have to reverse this. Okay. And you see now it's a bit better, but it may require a bit like a refinement. Maybe what we can do is taking it down to five so that we can easily see. And this may be super small here. And we can obviously preview that off too. So you see, based on our attractor curve, the sizes of our urban plot is changing. Uh, I need a minute to check on my cat. I'll be back in a minute. Yes, I am back. He was eating the trash bag. So uh, yeah. So as, as you see, when I move a control point, it's changing. And obviously you can make it even smaller, you know, if you want to really have sort of a, have sort of a, and range in between. Uh, well, the, the next thing that I wanted to do is basically, well, we can preview this, take this off. We can have this, we can have this. And the next thing is, why don't we test something or let me let me draw a better curve here, okay? Let me draw a better curve here. Set that one in. I mean, we can even draw an arc, but yeah, this one is fine too. So let's put it there. So why don't we try to orient all these rectangles or circle uh, squares? onto our curve here. What do I mean if I draw it another, again, another top view? You see our rectangles look like this, but if I have something, I don't know, again in red, but this time rotate them to or towards our curve, by keeping the sizes okay i start to draw horrible again but again these are the closer ones these are the these are going to be the not that one maybe smaller ones smaller ones and smaller ones and smaller ones why don't we do something as such just to just to make most out of this. So what we, we need to do is we need to orient our geometries, right? Based on their midpoints and on X, Y plane, because they're all on X, Y plane, right? And why don't we, why don't we do something like, we need a target. Oops, maybe I can push this all here, move this all here take you guys a bit upwards okay what we need is we need to create sort of the orientation planes for these planes to be rotated right and how we are going to do that we'll be recreating these planes we can go to the plane and then we align the plane we'll be aligning this plane but our directions needed to be here right and our directions is going to be a vector. So how we can create that vector? Basically, one of the things that we have here in this one is the closest point. So why I don't get this point in? And if we take a closer look at this closest point and our centers, which are these, if I create a line here, what we are seeing is exact directions that I need for this curve to be connected over here, right? Exact, the exact uh, lines or exact directions. So these directions, instead of using this as line, I can go and grab a vector component, vector two points, and then connect this one here. Oops, sorry. Connect this one here and connect this one here. Or just to make sure, we can connect this one too so that we don't have a 
problematic kind of uh, visualization. I can connect this over here. And what we see now, you see our planes are already rotated. So if I grab this and group this, well, the scribble and put the group rotation planes. And if I connect this plane as my target, see what we are having. You see, if I preview this off, obviously, you see now I'm having sort of a connection that is going all over the place. Obviously, we have some overlaps here. We can get away with that overlaps by decreasing this size into eight, or maybe like even a better scenario is to take out these um, control points bit here. Okay. And maybe this one is the more curvature we have, the more overlaps or the possibility that we have more overlaps increases. So when we have this, you see now my geometries are being controlled over here. And if I increase this, not that one maybe, but this one, you see they're all created onto this organization. We can make it smaller, larger, and so on and so forth. Or even we can take this a bit like that bit going up a bit like that you see it all follows our system over here but yes the problem with what we are having here is like they are not identically or they are not they're different from one another so there are two things to do i can really decrease the size of these guys or increase this one but when we increase this they're more likely overlapping which we don't want but let's keep it as it is for now and obviously if i have another curve here okay let's see what we are going to have you see now this time it takes the again the closest curve but let's let's use one single curve which we we are going to uh which we are going to show things in an easier fashion and what i can do is i can draw an arc start and let's say an end and maybe somewhere here and that can be our curve just to have it you know just to have a bit of better reading of the results and have this as eight and keep it as it is for now so this is basically what we have done and obviously you can control everything by using the controls uh, that we are having so we rotated it we, we basically changed the size and the next one we'll be talking about how we can come up with an algorithm or an organization that actually uh, that actually creates sort of uh, collusions or how we can get away from the collusions, how we can get away with the overlaps. And I'll see you next one.